Okay, so welcome, and my name is Dale Jarvis. I am the Intangible Cultural Heritage Development Officer for Heritage NL. Uh, Maureen, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do? Sure, my name is Maureen Peters, and I am the Curator of History at the Room Provincial Art Gallery Museum and Archives in St. John's. And how long have you, how long have you been working with the rooms now? It'll be 11 years uh, this June. Wow, yeah. Yeah, and, hard and to believe. <laughs> and a background in folklore. You you did the yes. folklore program, and and you but you yes. also have another another background in uh, conservation. Is that right? No, I did a um, undergraduate in folklore, and I have an, another from Dalhousie University in theater and costume design. In costume particular. design. Okay. Yeah, and then I did a postgraduate diploma in heritage resource management at Munn. I did a master's in fashion curation and museum studies program in London, England, at the uh, University of Arts London, the big massive. University that's over there in the under the fashion, the University of Fashion under the college sign. So I was really focusing on historic textiles and historic costumes. And then I came back to Newfoundland to do a PhD in uh, material culture. And uh, I got two and a half years into that and I had my first child <laughs> and got the job of the rooms. And the PhD has been kind of on right. hold ever since because I had another child. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us, uh, uh, tell us about how this uh, COVID-19 project started at the rooms. Well, um, as you know, like it was, there's been a lot of really interesting things coming up on social media. The, the big COVID group that used to be the Snowmageddon group that evolved into the COVID group. There's been a lot of like uh, material culture and some interesting things coming up on that. And then like my brother works at the Liquor Corporation. And uh, they're all hands on deck to create hand sanitizer for all the hospitals, the old age homes, uh, pharmacies across Newfoundland and Labrador. So they had special bottles made up. And it, it just seemed to be this kind of material culture being created about COVID and the, the masks. And then um, we, the art gallery, uh, Darren and uh, Darren Jewell and Marae Egan, started talking to artists about what they're creating during COVID. And then that came into a, well, why don't we start collecting now uh, what people are creating and uh, what, you know, government's making, what people are doing to cope with COVID-19. So we went, to, so the media contacted us about the, the project and they wanted to talk. So we had a, uh, a, did an interview with the Evening Telegram and that, that kind of sparked this whole rush of emails to me and, and this whole project <laughs> that came up called uh, that, we're, that I'm just calling kind of collecting COVID. Yeah. We're looking at what people are uh, producing, what people are making, what people are uh, doing, telling the stories about these things. Some of them have really great stories. I collected a mask from one of my neighbors and um, she written up her own instruction sheet and put it in with the mask. And, uh, and you know, so it was just something that people are doing to help other people to try to kind of cope with, cope with the COVID crisis and the, are kind of a new reality. I mean, it's just uh, amazing from one week to go from working full time in an office with your two kids in school to and your husband's working to all of a sudden we're home and now we're going into week eight next week. Uh, so just kind of seeing how what people are doing, what people are creating, and then we want to make this into a, a tangible ex exhibition. Right. So why yeah. is it important for museums to document this kind of thing as it unfolds? Uh, in talking to other museums all across the country, um, some people are collecting now, so we're going to wait till COVID is over to see what comes out of this. But uh, like I think the Museum of British Columbia, the Provincial Museum is collecting now. I believe the uh, Museum of History or National Museum in Ottawa is waiting until this is over. Uh, but they may change their minds or that might not be, you know, everybody's kind of in flux. So, uh, but I think it's important for us to start collecting now because once it's gone, it's gone. Like stuff like this that is kind of grassroots and vernacular and, and happening in the now, you kind of need to collect it now. So you don't collect it now, it might be gone uh, by the time you're going around looking for it. Uh, like we found, we just did this massive exhibit on the First World War. And, um, and what we found was that we went into our collections, we didn't have the collections there. That we want that we need to tell a story. We had lots of collection with no story attached and no history of the artifact because you know museums only started collecting the stories of artifacts really back in the late 90s to 2000s. Um, so what we wanted to do now, so we had to go out and do this massive collecting program. What we want to do now is be able to collect the artifacts, collect the stories attached to those artifacts, be able to document it in the real time of the of the lockdown and what's happening. I personally think it's really important to be collecting things now because also after the fact, you re, you, when you're reflecting back on it, 
your importance on things kind of changes too. I mean, all these cloth masks that people are making, uh, all that stuff, like in a year from now, aren't going to have the same weight as the culture object that they do in, this, in, in the immediate. Does that make sense? Yep. So if, uh, if people have uh, an object that they've created or something that they've been working on that they want to contribute to this project, how do they, mm -hmm. how do, they do that? Uh, they just contact me. Uh, my email address is mpeters at the rooms.ca and I have access to my work email and I'm logging those all into uh, our system. We have the electronic museum questions management system. So I'm logging all those in and uh, writing down all the histories and uh, attaching all the emails and the stories with it. And then once this is all listed, uh, we'll, be, we'll be collecting the questions manager way freely. Uh, right now, it's just a couple of things that I've been able to collect simply because uh, a neighbor knew we were doing this and contacted me and got it. And my brother is like a corporation. They donated two bottles of uh, their hand sanitizer or the bottles of the hand sanitizer um, to us. So I was able to collect those just because my brother's considered an essential worker and he doesn't drive. So my outing every day is driving to work. <laughs> so from my bubble to his bubble <laughs> to the NLP and um, and because uh, we can't take public transport, it's too risky right now with, uh, with COVID. So, um, so yeah, so he, so just kind of collecting certain things. Uh, I managed to get those to our conservator to get them down to the lab. Because ideally we take things in, they go into our lab, they get frozen or treated there uh, before they actually go into any type of collection or, or, um, or processing. So yeah, so they have anything, and we've gotten some really interesting offers, like uh, some amazing sculptures made by um, Driftwood and, uh, some other just really interesting pillows and cross stitches and the mats and bottles and uh, there's all kinds of stories. Like um, what I really am interested in is kind of threefold. I want to see how the what the medical staff are doing and what like, the medical equipment that people are making vernacularly, like the masks and like the the firm that's in town that's making the, the visors. Um, also looking at what people always wanted to create and never had the chance to but yep. now that they're home <laughs> they're able to do that like this man <laughs> contacted me with his driftwood sculptures and he said he's something he was always interested in doing but he finally has the time to walk on the beach every day and collect driftwood and he's making these beautiful large sculptures um you know and, it, and it's kind of like stuff that people always wanted to try and never had a chance to try you know we got another hooked mask that someone hooked for their local uh restaurant that stayed open so they they hooked their uh their uh logo yeah. on a mash right and stuff like that that people are just kind of inspired with this whole um the whole lockdown is kind of like a what are you creating what are you doing and then also we're looking at the history of pandemics in newfoundland because this isn't our first no. probably won't be our last <laughs> so the other aspect of that is that we're looking at the history of pandemics somebody contacted me that they have a 1950s this house is under quarantine sign that was on their door when they had a smallpox uh, outbreak in their household when they were in the 1950s and they had all kinds of great stories about going to school on the TV. So the lessons were broadcasted over the television. Hmm. Um, and they would happen to be wealthy enough to own a television at the time. Because like, I was talking to a couple of my aunts who all grew up in Bell Island. And I said, well, did you guys remember the polio? And my aunt was like, oh, yes, we, we missed four months of school. Um, and uh, then when they I said, well, did you guys have lessons on the TV? They're like, we were too poor to own the TV. <laughs> they were, you know one person down the road you also you know look through the window at the one television that the one neighbor had you know but they didn't they didn't have the tv at home to get the lessons yeah, yeah. so i was talking yeah. the, i was talking this morning with uh, bev king at the wooden boat museum and i think she's mm. on uh quilt number six or something so yeah. <laughs> she's, she's been yeah, doing I would love to get a quilt <laughs> <laughs> she's been she's been uh w had been collecting the material and had promised family members quilts and now is the time for her to uh to do it and we're seeing all kinds of amazing things online with um uh, you know uh, baking and there's this yes. explosion yes. of interest in sourdough bread and all that kind of stuff which I as, you know I, as someone who's interested in traditional whatever that means traditional craft you know we see this resurgence of it at this time which I think is yeah. really fascinating. Well my daughter had to do a entire digestive system yesterday for a science class and uh, I'm a big knitter so uh, I haven't crochet we, we when I was growing up here in Newfoundland I grew up out in Exception Bay South uh, we did crochet class in grade three. We had one afternoon a week where we all were taught craft. So so many got taught knitting, so many got taught crochet, so many got taught cooking, 
anyways, I took up the crochet and I haven't crocheted since then, but I have one crochet hook for some reason. And me and my daughter crocheted an entire in in digestive system <laughs> that, <laughs> behind that, me. <laughs> that, better be, that better be in the exhibit. when. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I can't. But it was funny. I said to her, like, she's like, Mom, how do you know how to crochet? I said, well, I did it in grade, I think it was grade three or grade four. And I remember it was Mr. Thornhill who taught me, Patricia Thornhill, a member of the parish I grew up in. And it was just like muscle memory. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a total muscle memory. I was like, I have no idea how I remember how to do this. I haven't done this in you know, 20 years, but it was just uh, about 30 years dating myself. <laughs> just like, you know, uh, it was just a whole muscle memory. And um, yeah, so I crocheted this, helped her crochet. I taught her how to crochet and uh, I crocheted part of the stomach. She crocheted part of the stomach and then I did the large and small intestines and all that stuff. And, you know, it was just like, and it was also, I mean, in a way too, that's kind of, um, it's the craft that I haven't used in a long time with my one of my daughters and um, Diana. And it, it's also, so it's a craft I haven't used in a long time, but it's also a way to um, teach her and pass yeah. that craft down to her. And these are some of the stories. These are the kinds of stories that we, we want to collect as well. So I should mention that this now, when I saw that you were doing this kind of collection work, I thought, oh, well, we can do part of this yeah. as well. So Heritage Janelle is going to be collecting the, the kind of the, the more intangible piece of this, the stories, the songs. We had an email this morning from a woman who's written some poetry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, people can contact you if they have material objects. They can contact me at uh, COVID-19 at heritagenl.ca and they can they can <laughs> submit that stuff to me as well and, and it'll all be part either of a collection uh, on the digital archives at Memorial or part of a, a future exhibit that that you guys are doing as well. Yeah well I mean what I see too and uh, you know we we need to me and you have to have some more meetings but you know the, all the physical objects that we are collecting too we got we'll take good images of those and those will also end up on the DAI. So yeah so I mean um so any, both of us have worked on a GAI before too, so we both yeah. have that ability to kind of, you know, write the metadata. So I kind of see it as almost like a partnership too, where we could do an online exhibition and have the content held at the room, but pulled from the GAI. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots of opportunities, but I think it's just really interesting to see how Newfoundlanders are reacting, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are reacting to the whole COVID-19. You know, some of it was a humor. Somebody sent me this really funny face mask that they made with the Corona beer fabric. <laughs> you know the, the cross stitch too that's um the don't lick the the uh cart handle you know by jamie Furner, and um you know we've already gone out and collected that also so it's something like that that we're just interested in just seeing how people are reacting both in and, and you know in serious stories too there's you know we did lose three people and there's, there's some of these other stories I was going to reach out and try to contact a woman in Chapel Arm who uh, was 94 years old and she bet, she, she bet COVID and someone made her a t-shirt. I survived yeah. COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, can we borrow that for the exhibit? I mean, there's lots of different things too that we're interested in. I know me and my friend, we're kind of hoping that Newfoundland does what New Brunswick does, which you're allowed to extend your bubble. So we have a neighbor who's good friends of ours and we're talking about getting t-shirts made up to say bubble buddy. <laughs> yeah, so when, when we can combine our bu bubbles, we'll have our Bubble Buddies t-shirts made and ready to go. <laughs> yeah. If that's the way that the government goes, we'll hopefully we'll find out this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Well, excellent. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what people uh, submit. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to uh, future conversations with you about what, what's going to happen with all this uh, material. So do you just want to give your contact information again? And if people want to get in touch with you about material objects that they have? Yes, yeah, sure. My uh, email, best way to reach me is email. It's uh, mpeters, uh, M-P-E-T-E-R-S, at therooms.ca. Um, and you could find my contact information on our website also. And you can also contact information, things information rooms at therooms.ca. Um, and that, those always get to me. They take a little bit longer to get to me, but they all do get to me <laughs> <laughs> eventually. That's great. Yeah. Thanks, Maureen. Yeah, thanks, Gail. Thank you.